that's the problem. There's too many books in there. Yeah. That's what I say all the time. It's Me too. Excuse. That's, that's my excuse. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I think they expected to hold on to 65 years worth. <laughs> and I think it's really kind of true because it's happening even to my son, who's you know not quite 30, and it's yeah. like, yeah. I, I just think the pace of life. I do too. Too many things to think about. Uh, but I do enjoy the Olympics. Well, start to sit up nice and tall. Yeah. However you want to sit, you know that for your legs. Let your eyes close and. Release your hands to a very comfortable place for your shoulders. And just start to feel your breath easily <clears throat> coming in, going out <clears throat> through, excuse me, through your nose. So you feel that sense of breathing equally in and out through both sides of your nose. Now that's kind of hard sometimes, I know, if you have allergies, if you're stuffy on one side, but just imagine that it's equal. Finding those little spaces between your breaths. And just let your face relax. Let go through your jaw. start to circle in a clockwise direction actually. So letting your torso start to move clockwise and let yourself start to come into breathing with these little circles. Your exhale is bringing you forward, your inhale is bringing you back. And the circles can get bigger and bigger. Or you can stay small if that feels better. Next time that you come forward, so you're forward again, stop briefly so you can reverse direction. So that you can let the circles now go the other way. Okay. Allowing the breath to move the body. forward, keep going a little bit to your left and put your left hand down on the floor here. Bring your right hand just up to your right hip and let yourself feel like you're grounding through that right sitting bone a little bit there. And then we're going to come back through center and do the same thing on the other side. Just let your right hand come to the floor, left hand to your hip. Imagine grounding through that left sitting bone there, coming into your side waist a little bit there. on back into center and we're going to walk ourselves on back up releasing our arms now fingertips out onto the floor beside us let's inhale both arms all the way out and up and let our exhale bring our hands right down together in front of our hearts and then we'll reverse those arms and inhale the hands up through the midline and on the exhale open the arms on back out and down and let's make a big circle with the arms bring your arms forward and up and let yourself reach back as far as you can and come back down to the floor with your fingertips and then we'll reverse to reach back first and then up and over the top and then bringing the arms on forward and down. Shake your hands out just a little bit. We're going to switch our cross of our legs. So come to the other leg in front 
bring your hands out beside you and then just open your hands really wide, really spread your fingers. Doesn't matter which way you're turning your hands really. And then make a, a fist so that you bring your thumbs on top and just gently squeeze, you know, not so much you feel too much going on there. And then open the hands really, really wide again and then put your thumbs in first and then wrap your fingers on top of your thumbs, but really don't push hard here, coming into a fist that way. And then again, spread the fingers wide, nice and wide, wiggle them around a little bit, your thumb too, and then come into that fist where the fingers come first and the thumbs on top. And now let your hands circle around a little bit in these fists and let yourself really come into feeling your wrists circling one way and then going the other. And then bring your hands on forward of your shoulders and let's open our hands, turn our fingertips down towards the ground and come forward if you can. Go ahead and put the tips of your fingers on the floor. You can go all the way to the pinkies going down and the thumbs too if your wrist let you do that. Otherwise, do what you can. Maybe just the middle finger is down or, or three of your fingers or maybe you want to go all the way. It really depends on your wrist. Don't force it. One more breath. And then come on back up. Rise the arms on forward and up overhead. And let's lower our left arm down and come into a deeper side stretch now, adding the arm here, letting yourself come over into your side stretch, breathing into that side you're stretching. And we'll rise on back up and we're going to switch arms. So coming on down with that right hand, reaching through the left side, feel that left sitting bone drawing downward towards the ground, opening up through the side here, feeling the ribs expand on your inhales. And then we'll rise on back up and let's come into a seated forward bend. So, you know, if you need to stretch your legs out, by all means do. Take your time to come forward. Keep that long back as long as you can. And then, of course, if it feels good to fold over a bit here at the end, then do. You, know, you can always grab a block if you want and put it under your forearms or your head, right? So if it feels good to be supported a little bit, you can give yourself a little support. Just draw the toes back a little bit. Feel the outside edges of your feet into the floor. And then we're going to slowly walk ourselves back up again. And now <coughs> let your knees come on, on up and your feet come onto the floor. Bring your hands back behind you for a second. And if you can, turn your fingertips towards the wall behind you. And then just open your chest a little bit here. Don't lift up. Just let yourself kind of feel a little bit here of drawing forward of the sternum and up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you open a little bit through the shoulders and the chest. And then release your hands and bring them behind your thighs. And come on up and do a little boat pose. Flex your feet a little bit. Feel the outside edges of your big toe mounds touching each other. You can stay right here. You can let go. Feels good to let go. You can. You don't need to. You can stay holding on. You can just enjoy a little bit of finding that core strength a little bit there. Good. And then bring the soles of the feet towards each other. And you can bring the feet in as close or as far away as you want from you so that you'd be able to find a release here in your hips. You can come a little forward in your body, Kanasana too, just to wake up a little more into the inner thighs. Good, and then we'll come on back up. We're gonna bring our legs forward, shake them out just a little bit. We're coming around towards our hands and knees from here. So do what you feel like doing there. Move around, wiggle around a little bit if you want. And let's come on the hands and knees. Get your hands pretty much as much as possible what's comfortable for you in your hands, of course. Under your shoulders though, hands under your shoulders, knees under your hips. And then just turn to look to your left, let your left arm float up parallel to the floor so it's straight out from your shoulder to the side. And then if you want to rise the hand up higher and higher, you can. You can even look up towards the ceiling. And let's thread the needle, bring that left arm on through, come on down to the left side of your head. If you can now, go ahead and extend your right arm long so that you come into a little bit deeper release there between the shoulder blades on your back. 
And just breathe into that space there. Let it feel good. And we'll bring the right hand back by our face so we can press up easily. <coughs> we get our hands back under our shoulders. And we're gonna look to the right. Right arm's gonna come on up again, parallel to the floor or higher and higher and higher if you want. And on your next exhale, go ahead and thread the needle with that right arm, bringing it on down and through onto the right side of your head and extend if you can the left arm overhead. Feel the hand on the floor there. Feel your elbow kind of softly of that left arm coming down towards the mat. And then breathe into that space between your shoulder blades on your back. Enjoy. Good, and then bring your hand on back by your face. Press your way up. Come on forward a little bit here. See if you can come just a little bit forward, almost like a half plank, right? If you can lift your feet up, do. If not, you know, you can keep the legs long. Coming into a little half plank there. Bend your elbows just a little bit in towards your ribs. And then shift your way on back. And we're going to bring our left foot forward and come on into a lunge here. So you know if you like your blocks, bring your hands onto your blocks. Step your left foot forward, your right foot back. Come on into that first lunge. And see if you can. Just feel the feet pressing gently away from each other. Imagine your right inner thigh reaching upward towards the ceiling. And your left inner thigh dropping downward towards the ground, which lines your legs up really and your knees. Good, we're going to switch legs. So however you want to go to the other side. Take your time. Get yourself aligned there. And again, think about those inner thighs. The front right inner thigh dropping down. The back inner thigh reaching up. Good. One more breath going to switch again. And this time, once you get your left foot forward, get really situated in your length of your lunge, straighten your left knee out, let your right heel descend directly behind your foot, lift your left toes up, let yourself enjoy being right there so you find the four corners of your left foot in the floor and pretty deep into that right calf probably. And then see if you can lift your foot up and be on your heel and extend your torso out over that front leg. So as you lift your left foot up, to, you're on the heel, you can really feel a lot going on there. And then lower your foot back down, your toes back down, bend the front knee again really easily, and we're gonna switch legs. So again, you want that back heel to reach directly behind your foot. Instead of coming inward, think about it reaching back. Most of us have it off the floor there. And then from there, as you straighten that front leg out, really find the four corners of the right foot as you lift your toes up. Just your toes first, because that really enables you to feel your arch lifting up, the four corners reaching down. And then if you want to lift your foot up and be on your heel, extend your torso right out over that front leg and really get into the backs of the legs here. Nice. And we are going to lower the foot down, the toes gently down, bend the front knee. Good. And we're going to step forward from here and come on into standing forward bend. And <coughs> really be mindful. Use whatever kind of support you want. You want to put your elbows above your knees, go for it. If you need to put your hands on your blocks, be mindful. Feel your nice, easy, full, deep breaths coming in and going out weight of your head. If you like to nod and shake your head a little bit, by all means do. <coughs> and then when you're ready, let your hands come on to your hips, bend your knees, rise on up. And we're going to inhale our arms all the way out and up overhead. And on our exhale, bring our hands down together in front of our hearts. Bend your knees just a little bit. Press equally into your feet. See if you can shift forward and back a little bit there. So you actually literally lift your heels up a little bit. And then when you go to your heels, you lift your toes up a little bit. 
so that you actually go back and forth to feel that weight shifting quite a bit. And then come on back into center. Let your toes come on down. Let yourself feel very centered. Draw upward now with the thighs. Feel your hips over your ankles, your shoulders over your hips. Let yourself feel that sense of your ears being over your shoulders, but with lots of space between your ears and your shoulders. Enjoying your mountain pose. Feel the surface of your skin, really. Just imagine everywhere the surface of your skin is touching the air, right? And as we unfold our arms right down beside us, we'll inhale both arms all the way out and up overhead. And on the exhale, bend our knees, come on forward into that standing forward bend. And let your next inhale help you find a nice long flat back wherever you want your hands to go. Think of the back of your head being in line with your spine. And we'll step the right foot back and come into lunge. And inhale, exhale into downward facing dog pose. So take your time, be mindful if you need to walk, if you need to wiggle your tail around, if you need to turn your head. Now really, be mindful to get into your dog, however it feels good to you. And then as you settle into dog and you feel your elbows hugging towards each other and you reach back through your tailbone and reach back through your sitting bones, you can feel your whole body here in the pose. And on your next inhale, come on out to plank. Nice and strong plank. Feel the belly engaging. Try not to drop into the belly, right? You want to feel that sense of your sitting bones reaching down towards your heels. And then let's put our knees down like we did earlier. See if you can lift your feet up off the floor, flex your feet, pull yourself like you're coming towards the front of your mat, and then bend your elbows halfway. Go about halfway down to the floor. And man, that's a lot of work right there. And then go all the way down if you can. Bring your legs back long and come onto your forearms with your elbows under your shoulders, coming on into a little sphinx pose. Spread your fingers a little bit. Actually, then let your hands come into loose fists, right? So you're gonna make your hands into those easy, loose little fists here for a second. Really, and think about releasing through your hands and your wrists. And then go ahead and bring your hands back, palms down, fingers onto the floor, thumbs onto the floor. And we're gonna lower back down towards the mat and we'll make our way back to down dog, whether you come back through that half push up you went down through, or maybe a full one. Or maybe you wanna go back to all fours and back to down dog. And we will bring our right foot forward to come into lunge here. And then we'll step all the way back into standing forward bend. Feet hip distance apart and parallel. And just be with your breath. Nothing more important than just to watch your breath. Because if you're comfortable in the pose, the pose will do work for you. And you can just easily accept your breaths. Fully and deeply, in and out. And letting your hands now rise on back up to your hips. Let's bend our knees, press into our feet, and rise on up. And inhale our arms all the way out and up overhead. And exhale, let our hands come right down together in front of our hearts. Let's re unfold our arms on down beside us and inhale just your right arm up for a second. Bend your elbow and let your hand come to wherever it can, behind your head or your neck or maybe your upper back. Bring your left arm up and over the top if you can and go ahead and bring your hand to your elbow. Don't pull really hard, but it's almost like you're supporting your elbow there. And you can kind of almost feel like you're pushing your elbow a little bit back into your hand, but your hand is holding your elbow there, right? So one more breath there, and then see if you can keep the elbow there. Bring your left arm back down and around behind you, and see if you can maybe think of the hands coming towards each other there on your back. If not, don't worry about it. Let the hand rest on your low back. One more breath here. 
and then unfold the arms on down beside us. We're gonna inhale the left arm all the way out and up overhead, and then bend that elbow. And again, you know, it's kind of up to you where your hand goes, don't force it. If you're able to bring the right arm up and over the top and let your hand come onto that elbow, again, try not to think about pulling the elbow towards your head. And instead, kind of imagine you're pushing the elbow a little into your hand. And you can just appreciate really there, the tricep. Keep your gaze forward, make sure you're not rounding, good. And now when you let go, try to keep the elbow where it is, bring that right arm back down and around behind you. And again, you can just put the hand on the low back or you might wanna reach your hands towards each other on your back. Feel that openness across your chest, right? So wonderful, this pose. So really feeling the openness through the heart and the openness across your chest here. One more breath, and then we'll lower our arms back on down beside us. Let's clasp our hands behind us. Take a nice inhale, and on the exhale, bend your knees and come on forward into your standing forward bend. Now you know, if you wanna go ahead and release your arms off your back, you can, that's up to you. Keep the hands down if you need to. Find what your shoulders let you do. And now bend your knees a little bit, press into your feet. Imagine you're trying to make your mat wider with your feet. You're pressing them away from each other without rolling to the outside edges of your feet. And now release your arms on down, hands come on down. Let your next inhale lengthen your spine and exhale left foot back to come into lunge. And inhale, exhale into your downward facing dog pose. J for the dog, spread your hands in a wide. And really feel equal in your hands there. If you have any doubt about your hands being kind of equal, look at them, you know, glance at them. Hug your elbows, watch you reach back into dog, in towards each other, and let your next inhale carry you to your plank. And see if you can now, just press into your toes and it'll put a little more into your wrist. Your shoulders will come a little forward and then let them come back again. So you kind of come a little tiny bit forward and back and now, the next time you come a little forward, we're gonna lower down. You can put your knees down first. Elbows right by the ribs. And let's come into a little cobra. Float your hands up too, and make those fists again that we've been doing. So let your hands come into easy little fists. Let them release there. They stay up a little bit longer without using your hands. And then bring your hands on down and you can press into your hands and rise up if you want, higher up in towards your cobra, elbows hugging in towards the ribs. And then from here, we're gonna lower all the way back down to the floor. Coming on into your down dog, however you choose to get there. Good, we're gonna bring the left foot forward to fine lunge. And then we're gonna come all the way back into standing forward bend. Nice, let your toes lift up for a second. If you're feeling a little bit of love for your toes, you can massage them a little bit. You can reach them, of course, but just let yourself be mindful there. Imagine waking up your toes. Good, and then let the toes softly come back down to the floor. We're gonna rise on up to standing and inhale our arms all the way out and up. And let our exhale bring our hands down together in front of our hearts. Next two sun salutations, just let it go with the breath. As you unfold your arms on down beside you, inhale, rising the arms out and up, and letting your exhale carry you forward. Let your inhale lengthen your spine. Exhale, right foot back to lunge. And inhale, exhale into your downward facing dog. Let your inhale bring you to plank. Your exhale will lower you down. And your inhale bring you to your cobra of choice and your exhale will bring you back to dog. Inhale, exhale right foot forward to lunge, and inhale, exhale to your standing forward bend. Bend the knees, rising all the way to the top, and on the exhale, we're gonna come forward again. Let your inhale lengthen out your spine. Exhale, left foot back to lunge, and inhale, exhale into your down dog. Let your inhale bring you to plank, your exhale will lower you down. And inhale into your cobra and get a choice. Exhaling back into down dog. Inhale. Exhale, left foot forward to lunge. 
and inhale. Exhale to your standing forward bend. Bend the knees rising all the way to the top. And let your exhale carry you forward. Inhale, nice long back. We're going to come into down dog, however you want to get there. Walk or jump. Wag your tail when you get there. Move through your feet a little bit if you like to turn to the tops of your toes, pressing into the top of your foot a little bit too. Maybe you want to pick a foot up and circle it around. Just be playful. Take your time. Good. And then, coming on back to full dog, we'll bring our left foot forward. And you might want both your blocks. We're coming on for warrior two. So if you need your blocks, you have them handy there. Line up those heels. Let it feel really good. Look at your front knee. Make sure you're lined up there. And then at first, just reach back through your right arm and turn your head to look back at your right arm back there. So you can very easily feel that that arm is straight back from your shoulder. Let the hand come a, maybe an inch higher. Let the shoulder really melt down. And then start to turn your head to the left and float your left arm up. And again, see if you can go just maybe an inch higher than you usually do. Feel your shoulders melt down. Feel the sense of really pressing the feet away from each other on the mat. Nice, and let's bring our left, I'm sorry, right arm down now and fold it behind us. Turn your left palm up and inhale. Reach up towards the sky. And really, if you wanna go further back, do. Coming into that reverse warrior, breathe, really feel the breath into the left wrist. And on your next exhale, come into your side angle where you put either your left hand or forearm onto your thigh. Let yourself keep your right hand back for just a second as you roll your right shoulder up. I mean, some of you might want to bring the hand more on your right buttock or your left buttock or even kind of wrap it around more if it feels good in your shoulder. Good, and then go ahead and lie your right arm right on the side of your body. Just let it lie there on top. And now let your fingertips trail up the right side of the body by your ribs, in front of your shoulder, by your ear, and then eventually lengthening up really into that long arm, turning the pinky a little down towards the ground, finding that sense of space between your ear and your shoulder. Good, one more breath. Now turn to look at the floor. We're gonna bring our left hand down because we're gonna come into triangle. Keep your, yourself there once you put your hand down to a block or your leg and you start to straighten that left leg out. You're still looking down. The last thing you're going to do is turn to open up into your triangle in the upper body, letting that top hand now come straight up from your shoulder. So just kind of evolving from your side angle into your triangle. And feel those thighs engaging upward. Feel that torso elongating out over that left leg all that space in your spine. One more breath. Good, we're gonna turn to look at the floor. We're gonna bring our hands down to find a lunge. And from this lunge, we're gonna walk around into a wide-legged forward bend. So you can use your blocks or you can just bring your hands to the floor. Come on around to get your feet pretty parallel and set up how far apart you wanna be with your feet. And go ahead and bend the knee this time. Really be mindful. Take your time. Stay maybe on one side long enough to feel that stretch of the inner thigh. Good. And then come on back into center and go ahead and turn your toes out a little bit, your heels forward, so you're turned out at your hips, and do that same bending of a knee at a time. You know, and you can either keep on going to lift the foot up if you like that, if you like to lift a up to the heel of the foot. If you like to shift your hips down towards the ground, you know you're more than welcome to do that. If you do that, just be mindful, you know, so that you come into supporting yourself how you need. And when you've gotten evened out that way, end up back with your feet pretty parallel, coming into your Prasarita Padottanasana. Yeah, that beautiful sounding, that wide-legged forward bend. And everybody's different. Get where you're the most comfortable today. If you want your elbows above your knees, if you want to use blocks underneath your forearms or your head, or maybe you just feel like you want to go ahead and let your head hang, bring your hands between your feet or behind you. 
And now let the most important thing just be to stay with your breath. Following the breath, so all the way in and all the way out. Think about releasing through your face and your jaw. You can imagine relaxing your throat. We're going to walk ourselves back out from here to be able to walk back to our lunge. So coming on back into your lunge again, and we'll make our way back into downward facing dog pose from here. Walk your dog a little bit all the way to the tops of your toes, over the tips of the toes, one foot at a time to press into your like your toenails. So you stretch out the feet. Good. And then come on back to your full dog. Let your feet come a little closer together and wrap your right foot around behind your left ankle. So, you know, you just got the right foot barely off the floor. It's wrapped behind your left ankle and you can add a little nice extra to the back of that left leg there. Hug your elbows towards each other. Feel equal through your hands. Unhook your right foot, put it back on the floor and do your left one behind your right one. Keep even in your hands as best you can. It's kind of hard because you're a little bit cockeyed there. One more breath. And then come back to both feet. Let's come on out to a plank. And let's come on down to the mat, however you want to get there. And try it up, dog. Coming on up, lifting the knees up off the floor, whether your toes are curled under or you're on the tops of the feet. And then we'll release to come on back down. And from here, come on back into your downward facing dog pose. And then go to do whatever you want to do from here. If you want to move a little bit more, a little bit more through vinyasas or kriyas, by all means do. So take your time. If you like to keep going, if you like to put your knees down, anything that feels good to you really right now. Good. Even out, if you're doing one leg doing something, make sure you, the other leg gets the same amount of attention there. And then we'll meet back again in downward facing dog pose. And we will bring the right foot forward and we're coming up for warrior two. So again, you know, if you need your blocks, you can have them handy there. Being mindful of finding that length of stance, that alignment of that front knee. Really taking your time to get there. And then let your left back arm come up. Go ahead and look back and really let your hand come just about an inch higher or so than you usually do. Feel your shoulder melt down. And then as you start to turn your head, rising that front arm up, same thing, a little tiny bit higher. Feel your shoulders melt down. And then if you feel better to lower the hands a tiny bit again, do. Bring in your gaze out over the top of that right hand. Feel the feet in the floor. Imagine the feet pressing gently away from each other, making your mat longer so you really feel your hips. We'll fold our left arm behind us onto our low back, turn our right palm up, and inhale, reach up into reverse warrior. So you can go straight up or you can decide to go further back behind yourself. Breathe into the right side. And on your next exhale, come into that side angle. Now keep your hand, left hand behind you if you can as you start to come down and lengthen through both sides. You can always kind of send the hand a little further over towards the top of that right hip if you like that feeling in your shoulder for a second. And then go ahead and lie the left arm down on the top of your body. Just let it rest there. And then our fingertips are just going to glide right past the ribs in front of our shoulder and our ear. And it's like your arm is growing, right? And it just gets longer and longer and longer. And as you turn the pinky down and you press into that right forearm and you draw your outer right hip back. Oh my gosh, extended side angle is such a great pose. Imagine for a second you're breathing into your back ribs. One more breath. 
And now as you turn to look at your right foot, remember we're setting up for triangle. So if you like a block, get a block. Straightening that right leg out, feel your thighs lifting up. And as you turn to look to the left and you let your left arm come straight up from your shoulder, there you are in your triangle pose. Thighs engaging up towards the hips. You can look up a little bit if you want to. If your neck feels good to do that, you can push your left hand maybe a little forward and be able to turn your head to look up towards the ceiling. One more breath. Good, and we are gonna come into a little lunge. Bring yourself all the way down to release that left heel directly behind you. And we're gonna walk around again into that wide-legged forward bend. Now this time, once you kinda get your feet settled, Walk your hands way, way out like you're doing a down dog, but let your hands be farther apart than usual for a dog. And then let your heart melt down and back a little bit. So you're really giving in to releasing there in the upper back. A little bit of a back bend here. Just breathe and release. And then walk your hands on back. And if you're okay to do the traditional hands between your feet, shoulder distance apart for your hands, elbows hugging in, letting your head hang, draw your shoulders away from your ears, you can stay there. And if you're like, yeah, no, this does not work for me, use what support you need. And then just find that attention to your breath. See if you can let your inhales and exhales become pretty close to even, or let your exhales extend out a little bit longer if you choose. Nice, one more breath. We're going to let our hands walk on back out so we can walk back to the right foot, come back into lunge, and back again into downward facing dog pose. And this time, once you're in dog, move around however you need for a second, and let's do a little bit of side plank work. So coming from your down dog here, let's come on out to a plank, and coming on to your right hand, if you want to, also your right knee can come down. And you can do that variation as you lift yourself up with your left arm reaching up towards the ceiling. You can come into that variation. You can even lift the left foot off the floor if you want to. Or even if you're in your full side plank, you can lift the top foot up if you want to try it. And then we'll come on back through, and we're going to go the other side. So again, left knee down, shifting that way, or coming into your full side plank, letting yourself be where you can. Enjoy that strength of that support here into the arm and the shoulder. Come on back down. And then from here, we're going to lower down. Knees first if you need. And let's come into, at first, just a sphinx. Bring your elbows under your shoulders. Let your hands be softly into the floor. And then just bend your right knee. Flex your right foot a little bit. Feel the heel just being drawn gently in towards your buttocks. And then bring it back down and we'll do the other side. So just flexing the foot, feel the heel pulling in a little bit, feel the engagement of the belly, but also the stretch for the belly. Good, and then we'll come on back down again. And let's lower down and bring our hands back by our chest and we're gonna come on back into down dog, however you choose to get there. And now if you wanna do a couple of vinyasas or kriyas, go for it. It's totally up to you, you know that. Always rest in child's pose. Finish off whatever one you're doing. We're going to meet back in down dog. And from here, we'll bring our feet a little closer together. We're going to lift our left leg up in the air. Let the toes face down towards the ground. Hug your elbows towards each other. And now as you inhale, come forward like you're going to plank and bring your knee down like it's coming in towards your chest. And when you inhale, go back to your three-legged dog. So exhale, coming forward, letting the knee come down, forward. And then inhale, bringing it back. And then one more time, letting yourself come down with that knee and in a little 
and then extending back forward. One more breath in your three legs. And we're gonna bring that left foot forward and through. We're coming up for warrior one. So adjusting that back foot. Letting your arms, once you get up, float forward and rising up overhead, turning your pinkies towards each other a little bit. And then once you get up there, if you're comfortable to clasp your hands and send your pointer finger up, hug your elbows in, do it. You can always keep your elbows bent, remember. If you, if you really like the hand mudra, but you feel like it lifts your shoulders up too much, if you bend your elbows a little bit and then rise them up, sometimes that helps. You can come straighter arms if you want. Just enjoy opening up through the front of the body. Feel that great circle of breath. Inhaling up the front, over the top, exhaling down the back. Nice. Bring your gaze back forward. Let's release our arms. Bring our hands behind us here. Clasp your hands. And we're still bent in the front knee here. We're going to fold forward coming into humble warrior here. So you can fold all the way over your inner thigh. You can bring your arms off your back if you choose to, or you can stay up higher and just bow your head. You don't have to go low, you go where you can. And then we're gonna release our hands down and we're gonna find that lunge again. So now adjust that back foot so you're reaching directly back through that heel, heel, right? And we're gonna add a twist. Now you can use, keep your hand, right hand down, left hand up to your low back or your hip. You can stretch the arm up. I know some of you like twisted prayer. If you feel like you wanna bring your right elbow across to your left knee and bring your hands into prayer, go right ahead. One more breath. And then we're going to come on back down and we're going to make our way back into downward facing dog pose. Do what feels good. Walk through, move through, whatever feels right for you here. Put your knees down if you'd rather. You know that. Be mindful. Good. And we're going to meet back in down dog again. And this time for the three legs, feet a little closer together so that when you lift your right leg up, it feels okay into that three-legged dog. And then from here, we're gonna come forward, bring the knee down, come like you're coming into plank. And when you inhale, stretch that leg back long. So exhale, coming forward. And inhale, stretching back. And one more time, letting yourself come into that plank. And then coming back to those three legs, reaching back. Let it really extend. Beautiful. We're going to bring that right foot forward and through. We're coming up for that warrior one. So again, as your feet start to adjust, let your arms just real easily start to float forward. Once your legs feel pretty good, let the arms keep on going up overhead. And once you feel like, okay, I feel pretty good right here, go ahead and clasp your hands if you want and hug your elbows in a little bit. You can again, stay with your elbows bent, rise them up. If you don't like the hand clasping, don't do it. Keep your hands apart. Feel your feet in the floor. Feel that breath coming up the front of the body, flowing down the back of the body. And then as we bring our gaze forward, we're gonna release our arms on down and behind us to clasp our hands. And again, you can stay right here. You do not have to fold over your leg to feel good, right? If it feels good because it's like, oh, that's like a relief to come forward, you can. But not everybody's arms want to come off their backs because their shoulders aren't built that way. So be where you can. And then we'll let our arms come on down. We're going to find our lunge, remember. So now release that left heel directly behind. I like to put a block under my left hand for this twist, but again, you can do twisted prayer. You can bring your left elbow across to your right knee. You can bring your right arm up, straight up from your shoulder if you like in this twist. But just enjoy, feel your whole length of the body here in that twist. Beautiful, and then we'll come on back down we're going to make our way to one more down dog and 
through one more vinyasa or kriya or however many we want to do actually. So take your time, do what feels good. If you want to move a little bit more, if you want to rest, put your knees down. It's Friday. And then when you're ready, once we meet back in down dog, we're going to think about how to get towards the front of our mat. So bend your knees deeply and hug your elbows towards each other. Decide if you want to jump or walk your way or however you want to get to the front of your mat. Come on into your standing forward bend. And get easy. You know, if you like to bring your hands onto your feet or maybe you even want to slip your hands under your feet with your palms up and your toes pressing down into that heel of your hand if that feels good, but just be mindful. Be easy. Let the breaths come in and go out fully and deeply. Good. One more. Easy. Really nice full breath here. come back up to our hips as we press into our feet equally and rise up. We'll inhale our arms. Let our arms float really all the way out and up. And as they come softly down, think about reaching up higher through the top of your head. Feel your pelvis. Make sure you're not tucking your tailbone so you feel really good. You're stacked up there. Your mountain pose feels like a floating mountain. Okay, It's almost so easy you feel like you're just floating there. Nice, and then we'll go ahead and let our hands come on down and shake it out a little bit. And we are going to bring our mats into a wall today. We're going to turn, so you're good there, and right, you can come right there, Betsy. And Marcy, I think we can get three people on that. So, like, if you're at the door, Arena, you can be in the middle there, Marcy. There you go. And I think we have plenty of room. Get your blocks. We are going to stay here, so just kind of have everything handy there by you. And get your blocks, and let's, let's practice a little half moon with our back foot to the wall, okay? So that we have the, a little bit of support. If you want to go on the next time and do a little half moon without, you know, anything behind you, you can. If anybody is like, I don't want to do my foot to the wall, I want to do my whole back to the wall, I'm sure you can find a spot, right? So... If, if you like doing the foot to the wall, we'll all do our right foot back. And if you're using your back to the wall, you can find a place where you're here, where you have your left hand down to the block, you're on your left foot, right? So if anybody's really wanting to do back to the wall, you can. So if you do, there's a spot right over here for somebody to put their back to the wall if you want. Okay, so remember, your toes are turned a little bit away from the floor in half moon. Facing down into warrior three, if you turn them up a little bit away from the floor. Remember, you don't want to get the leg parallel, the foot parallel to the floor or the ceiling, though. And then just imagine bringing your right hand up to your right hip. You've got some weight there in your left hand, but you're pressing into your foot on the wall. And when you bring your right hand to your right hip and you turn to look to your right, it feels pretty good. The hips are going, oh my, I feel more open. Stretch your right arm up if you want to, straight up from your shoulder, but you don't need to. Good. And then release and come back down. We're going to switch legs. You know if this hurts, you don't do it. So if you know you're better to keep your toes facing down in a warrior three, rather than opening the toes a little away from the floor, do it. Right? So paying attention to what feels good for you. So if you're in your half moon, if, if shifting your weight to your right hand feels okay, push, pushing that left foot into the wall and imagining you're trying to lift that left foot up towards the ceiling, that's what's going to engage the core big time, right? And then you might be able to bring the arm up, but you don't need to. You can keep the hand down on your hip. And if you feel really unsteady, keep your gaze down towards the ground too, right? 
when you're ready, you come down, do what you need, squat if you need to, let your hips release however you want. And let's try either one in balance, or you can do that same thing you just did. If you're feeling really unsteady today, go ahead and use your foot at the wall. But if not, you can try letting the right leg come up, turning the toes out, and letting yourself practice a little bit of balancing here, right? And if you're like me lately, my balance has been really off, so good luck with that. But hey, just have fun and play a little bit. Remember, you want your heel directly back from your sitting bone. You don't want that leg to flail back behind you. So there's this, there's this real feeling of the leg being directly behind, not swaying over into adding a little bit of too much into your back there. Good, we're gonna switch legs when you're ready. So again, take your time, just play. Does not matter if you balance, it does not matter at all. If you bring your left hand up or not, just let the hip open. wanting to go down so let's just do it let's go down to the ground let yourself shift back towards child's pose but don't put your feet all the way to the wall yet let yourself just come a little bit back to your child's pose let yourself release breathing into your low back and and you know wherever is most comfortable for your arms you can bring them soft overhead or back alongside your legs or use a, your hands as a pillow if you want for your head And now we're going to come forward and we're going to come onto our forearms and come into a forearm plank, right? So let yourself come on into elbows underneath your shoulders, coming into your forearm plank here. So if you want to keep your hands separated and let your forearms be parallel, fine. Or if you want to clasp your hands and send your pinky finger out. Now from here, see if you can start to walk your feet up towards your face, coming towards a dolphin pose. And you know, you might go, huh, well now I don't really want to do that. If, if you come too much, your shoulders don't feel good, don't do it. Once you stay in your dolphin for a couple of breaths, see if you can slowly walk back into your plank. So take your time. Stay in the plank for another breath. And then do that little walking up. Let it feel like just a walk in the park, right? So just walking on up towards the face. Find your dolphin pose for a second. Walk back into your plank again. Good, and now put your knees down, shift back, and either sit up. You know, if you all are fine to sit on your heels, let yourself sit up for a little breath here, do. If you'd rather do child's pose because this is too much on your knees, do. Right, so just take a little break. Let yourself breathe. And get some water. Good. So now from here, we're going to again, come down into that forearm plank. Actually this time, let's let our heels be on the wall, right? So you're, you're now to the point where your heels are touching up at the top of the baseboard. You're pressing into your forearms. You feel your elbows hugging towards each other. Good. And now we're going to come down onto our bellies and roll to our right side. And now your feet should be in the wall. You're going to lay out on your right arm as long as your shoulder lets you do that. Now, your right foot can really push into the baseboard, right? And you're gonna bring your left foot in. We're gonna do Anantasana, the side line pose here. Bring your foot in like you're doing tree. Let your knee face up towards the ceiling. And then use your left hand to draw the left knee up and towards your shoulder more. Now, if you press into that right foot there, kind of helps. You might even wanna extend the leg long. You don't have to hold the foot. You can hold behind or in front of your, your thigh or, or your calf. 
You can do the big toe hold if you feel like it. Very stabilizing to push into that foot on the wall though, isn't it? Just pretend you're standing up. Let it feel really, really good, really extending, really opening for the hips, especially after those half moons. One more breath there. And now let the leg come on back down. And now you're gonna bend the left knee and bring yourself for a quad stretch. The foot comes behind you. You can reach back and get the hold of the top of your foot if you can. If you can't, don't worry. Just flex the foot and feel the heel coming in. If you've got the foot, you can pull the heel in like it's coming in towards your buttocks a little bit. And then we're gonna release that leg long and we're gonna come back onto our bellies briefly because we're gonna just keep going all the way over to the other side. So you gotta finagle your way back onto your mat or center it a little, at least a little. And then again, your left foot is into the wall, into the baseboard. Let yourself, when you're ready to bring that right foot up, let it be a nice release for your hip. Just that, just like you're being in tree pose, right? And you can grab your knee, draw the knee up towards your shoulder, press into that foot on the wall. And again, if you decide to extend your leg long, you can hold behind the thigh. You don't have to even extend it long either. Rotate that heel forward, let yourself really feel the foot in the wall there in the baseboard. And extend into the hips, feel your belly working, feel that outward hip rotation. Good, beautiful. One more breath. And now lowering the leg back down. Remember, we're gonna do that quad stretch. So once it's there, knees side by side, you can again think of reaching back and getting your foot. Keep your knees pretty fairly, you know, close together. It's like you're reaching that right knee down towards the wall at your foot there. Just to engage pressing into the wall a little bit with your left foot. Awesome. And then let the leg come back long again. We're gonna roll back to our bellies. And from here, make a little <coughs> pillow with your hands, bend your knees, let yourself do little windshield wiper blades with your lower legs coming side to side. And then stretch your legs long, bring your arms down alongside you. Now, you may be happy enough just to float up into a little locust pose. But if you're a bow pose person, actually bow pose right now might feel more releasing than a locust pose. Just saying. Now, that's not necessarily true, but I'm just saying it might. So you come into wherever feels good for you. Stay in your locust if you choose. Come into bow pose if you want. And then we're gonna let ourselves come on down and we're gonna release to press back towards pose of a child just briefly, letting yourself release back. And, and be mindful when you do shift from a bow pose to a, a child's pose, be a little careful. Sometimes it's almost too much for people to go into child's pose. So you can always stay with your hips up, not go so deeply. Give your body time to adjust after a bow pose, right? Everybody's different. Good, and then we'll bring our hands back by our knees if we're in child's pose, because we are gonna come up and around with our legs. So let yourself bring your legs on around in front of you and bring your feet just towards the corners of your mat. All right, so your, your legs are not really wide, but they're open a little bit. And then just ease your way forward. You can let your hands stay on your, on your legs or go to your feet, letting yourself ease into a, a, a gentle forward bend, right? Coming from your low back. If your knees need to bend, let them. I mean, if you feel like, ah, I'd even rather put blocks under my knees because that feels like heaven, then you can do that, right? If, you're, if your back, your hamstrings feel really tight, just let yourself be mindful. I like 
Look at Sherman. You're, you're the thinker. <laughs> Sherman the thinker. Oh, we should make this a pose. <laughs> oh, it really feels good. <laughs> the thinker. <laughs> okay, we're going to rise on back up. And we're going to come down onto our back. So take your time. Release your way on down. Make sure you're not going to bang your head in the wall. Bring your knees in your chest. Let the knees come a little side to side. Oh, let's do this. Okay. Bring your feet to the floor. Cross your right thigh over your left, woman cross-legged. And then draw your knees in towards your chest. Now, you know, you can do this cow face here however you want. You can hold just your knee or knees. You can separate your feet more, hold your shins. Or some of you might want to reach down and get your feet, right? So this will be a deep release for that right hip. So whatever works for you, let yourself breathe into where you need it. And then let your arms come on out beside you and your left foot come back down to the floor. And then from here, let your knees go a little bit to the right, to the right, right? Now the right leg's on top, but just let the knees come a little to the right so you feel a bit of a side waist there stretch. And then come on back up to the center and let the knees go to the left. And then you can stay on the left as long as you want here. You can use a block if you want to give your legs support so you can just stay here in the twist and breathe. You can turn your head to the right if you want to. Just be mindful, let it feel good. And now when you get ready to come back, go ahead and kind of uncross. As soon as you want to, straighten your spine out. So you might want to lift your hips up, kind of straighten out. And then we'll bring our left thigh on top of the right and draw your knees on in. Now whether you hold a knee or knee, you know, bottom knee or top knee or behind your thigh, I forgot to say that on the other side, or you can have your hands holding, feet separate more, hold your shins, your ankles, or your feet. Whatever releases your hips the most, flex your feet a little bit though. And then bring your breath to where you need it. So you can put your right foot back down on the floor and let your legs come over to the left a little bit. Now, you know, you can kind of stop as soon as you want, but kind of keep going. See if you can let yourself find a little more there in the right side waist. And, you know, it's kind of different for everyone how far you want to go. And then bring your knees back up through center and we're going to keep going over to the right with the knees and again you can turn your head to the left you can grab a block put it underneath your legs if you feel like it's too much to lower the legs too much just use support and breathe ready to come back up. Again, go ahead and uncross whenever you need to and get yourself straightened out in your spine and then when you're ready, knees can come in, whether you feel like doing a little happy baby or a, a little bit of a baddha konasana or maybe you just want to stretch your legs and do a wide angle. Start to listen to what your body wants you to do. It could be any number of things. You need to do any kind of movement or pose, let yourself do it. If you need a plow pose, do one. If you need to come into a bridge pose or a supported bridge, by all means. Take your time. 
time. And just paying attention to what your own body means after all we've just done. Obviously, that's different for every single person. love to bring stuff if start to realize that you really need a little bit of support wave at me on your side as you allow yourself to appreciate that ground underneath you supporting you to easily come in and go out. No, nothing you need to do in order to breathe. Let yourself accept those breaths. <coughs> when your mind goes off into a thought, it's okay. Just softly return to your breath over and over and over again. Let your body and your brain find those little quiet places. And give yourself the gift of these few minutes just to let yourself completely and fully relax.
yourself physically there on the ground again, feeling the firmness of the floor supporting you. And just gradually allow your breaths to come in and go out more fully and more deeply. Imagine those breaths really are flowing through your whole body to wake you up again. So that wiggling your fingers and your toes, your hands, your feet feels easy and natural. And you know, come into moving the way you need, whether you like to stretch or bring your knees up and in, or let your knees go side to side. Just be mindful so you don't feel like you're forcing anything. You know you can roll to either your right or your left side anytime you want if you're comfortable to lie on your side. Just give your body and your brain a little adjustment time, however you need to do that. that rising up to sitting feels like really the next natural thing to do when you're ready. And you can have your eyes stay closed and let your body find its way into that comfortable sitting position for you. It might be stretching your legs out, it might be crossing, or it might be sitting up on a blanket or a bolster or something. But just enjoy feeling your head again. Once you get it up there on top, feel like it's floating so that the spine feels very easily lengthened. And you can watch your breath coming in and going out through your nose again. And on your next exhale, just letting your hands gently come to touch there right in front of your chest. I'm wishing each one of you a very joyful day. Namaste. Namaste. Happy Friday. Sounds like it's going to be a hot one, too.